and welcome to this video from the best of CET series. In this video, we are going to deal with questions from the topic of probability. So what you can do is, you can have a look at this slide which has all the questions, try them out on your own and then have a look at the solutions that will follow. The ideal time that you should be taking to solve these three questions is going to be three minutes. However, understanding that this is a slightly difficult topic, you can take a maximum of four minutes to solve these three questions. So I'll see you on the other side with the solutions to these particular questions. If you like our content and want to experience the IMS pedagogy, you can join the IMS zero fee prep programs that will give you access to concept videos, sectionals, full length tests and more for free. You may click on the I button or on the link in the description box below to access the same. Happy learning. Coming to the first question, the probability of A hitting a target is 0.8 and the probability of B hitting a target is 0.5. If A and B get one chance each to hit the target, find the probability of the target being hit. So in this case, the target being hit does not mean that A and B should both hit the target. It basically means either A hits the target and B doesn't or A does not hit the target but B does or both A and B hit the target. So you can either say that the answer is going to be the probability of A hitting the target, which is 0.8, plus the probability of B hitting the target, which is 0.5, minus the probability of A and B both hitting the target. Now, why is this done? The answer to this lies in a simple Venn diagram, which you might know of. So in this case, let's say, for example, there are 10 times that you are hitting a target. We are saying that this entire circle of A is going to be equal to 8 and this entire circle of B is going to be equal to 5. Now, if A and B are both hitting a target, that also has to be a part of the solution. So, A and B, if I add the areas of these two circles, what I am doing is I am adding this middle portion twice. I am adding this entire circle and this entire circle, but this middle portion is getting added twice. So I have to remove the middle portion if I want to find the cumulative area or the cumulative objects that are present in these two circles. So in this context, 0 0.8 plus 0 0.5 minus the intersection. So in this case, because these two are independent events, the intersection will be nothing but 0 0.8 into 0 0.5 that is 0 0.4, which will tell us that the effective probability of the target being hit either A will hit or B will hit or both A and B will hit, doesn't matter, will be 8 plus 5, 13 minus 4, that is 9. So, 0 0.9 is the probability that the target will be hit. So, our answer is option B. What you can also think about in this context is the fact that if we have to find the probability of the target being hit, we can also figure out the probability of the target being missed. And if you subtract 1 or if you subtract the probability of the target being missed from 1, then you are going to get the probability of the target being hit because it is a binary event. Either you hit the target or you do not. There is no in between path that we are following. So, in this case, what is the probability that the target will not be hit? This basically means that A will not hit the target and B will not hit the target. So, if A does not hit the target, the probability of that happening is 0 0.2 and so multiplication the probability of B not hitting the target will be 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 is the chance that B hits the target. 0 0.5 has to be the probability that B does not hit the target. So, the probability that the target does not get hit is 0 0.2 into 0 0.5 which will be 0 0.1. So, 0 0.1 is the probability that the target does not get hit. So, what is the probability that the target gets hit? 1 minus 0 0.1 which is 0 0.9. So, again, my answer is going to be option P. Now, this was a slightly tricky question and you had to do a lot of work to get to the answer. So, people who are relatively slow when it comes to writing down things and solving things and get confused as to what needs to be cancelled and what needs to be carried forward, you would have got stuck in this particular question. But of course, these are the kind of questions which will separate the people who do extremely well at the CET from those who are not very good at tests like the CET. So here, let's have a look at the normal way of solving. There isn't a shortcut that you can use to solve this particular question. So let's just go ahead and do the difficult way of solving this particular question. So in this case, what is happening is A and B, both of them contain five balls each. 
A contains two red and three blue balls. So we can say that there is box A which has two red and three blue balls and there is a box B which contains three red and two blue balls. Now what is happening is two balls of the same color are transferred from box A to box B and then two balls are drawn from box B. You have to find the probability that the two balls that are drawn are red in color. Right. So, what are the or what is the color of the two balls that we are transferring from A to B? That is something that we do not know. And obviously, there are two ways in which you can do this. Either you transfer two red balls from A to B or you transfer two blue balls from A to B. And these are the two outcomes that will determine what is going to happen at the end because depending on what you have transferred from A to B, it will if, uh, impact the probability of the, um, the, or the color of the balls that you are drawing from B. Right. So, that is what is what is going to happen here and we are going to just look at it in this particular context. So, here if you look at it, two red balls, if two red balls are transferred from A to B, what is the probability of that happening? Two red balls can be selected out of two red balls that exist in two C2 ways. So, there is only one way in which you can select two red balls out of the two red balls that exist. What is the probability of selecting two balls out of the five balls that are present in A? So, the answer is very straightforward, it is 5 C 2 multiplied by what is going to happen in case of B now. Now, if two red balls have been transferred from A to B, the number of red balls in B now becomes 5 and the total number of balls in B now becomes 7 because 5 are already present and in addition to that you are, you are having two new red balls here. So, the probability of getting two red balls from B is now going to be 5 C 2 because now there are 5 red balls. And the number of ways in which you can select two balls from B is going to be 7 C 2. So, what is going to be the calculation here? 2 C 2 is going to be 1 divided by 5 C 2 is going to be 10 multiplied by 5 C 2 is again going to be 10 and 7 C 2 is going to be 7 into 6 42 by 2 that is 21. Now, you might be tempted to cancel out 10, 10 and write your answer is 1 by 21 but before that you have to look at the options. If you look at the options, one option is 10 by 210, one is 9 by 210, one is 19 by 210, the fourth is 20 by 21, which you can again write as 200 by 210. So, instead of simplifying things here, what you can do is you can just keep it as 10 by 21 for the time being or 10 by 210 for the time being and then have a look at what is going to happen in the second case. So, the answer here or the first part of the answer is 10 upon 210, that is what is going to happen. In the second context, what is going to happen is two blue balls would have been transferred from A to B and of course, if you have uh, an inkling of thought here and if you again can take a leap of faith and trust the examiner and all those kind of things, you might get an answer at this point in time. How is that? 10 upon 210, it is a very small number that we are getting but my answer has to be greater than 10 upon 210. Why? Because there is one case that I have not considered. So, 9 by 210 cannot be my answer, 10 by 210 cannot be my answer. So, I am torn between 19 by 210 and 20 by 21. Now, 20 by 21 is a very big number. We are saying that 200 times out of 210, you are going to get the answer right. But here I have again only accounted for 10 by 210. So, 10 by 210, can it become 200 by 210? That is a far-fetched thing, right? So, again, if I have to take a leap of faith, I will mark C as my answer. But again, you should not take these kind of risks if you have time on hand. If you do not have time on hand, you want to guess the best option instead of guessing a random option, solve a bit, then guess the option that you think is the best guess and then go ahead. So, in this case, if you continue, two blue balls would be transferred from A to B. Now, the number of blue balls that are present here are 3 out of which we are transferring two balls. So, 3C2 divided by 5C2 because out of 5, we are selecting two balls. Multiplied by, in case of B, what is happening? We have three red balls and four blue balls now. So, out of three red balls, we are supposed to select two. So, three C2 ways and out of seven balls now, we are supposed to select two. So, seven C2 ways. So, this will again be nothing but three by 10 multiplied by three by 21. Same thing that we are calculating. This will be effectively nine by 210. So, the first part of the calculation gave us 10 by 210. The second part gave us nine by 210 because it is an either or scenario, you are transferring either two red balls or two blue balls or means addition. So, we will simply do 10 by 210 plus 9 by 210 or 19 by 210. So, the correct answer is 
option C that is 19 by 210. In this question, we basically have students, some of whom speak English, some of whom speak German and some of whom speak French. The last part of the question is very important. Each student speaks at least one language. Now, I know that some people might not be very good at permutations and combinations or probability or even Venn diagrams for that matter. So, what you have to do is you have to have a set pattern in your head when it comes to these kind of questions. So, one thing I will talk about here is the number of incidences versus the number of participants. It is a very important concept. So, I just explain it briefly in a minute and then we can start solving the question. Let us say you have a classroom of 100 students. You ask these 100 students how many of them are interested in English. Let us say for example, whoever is interested in English, you give a book that has been written in the English language. 30 students will raise their hand. So, you would have given 30 English books to these 30 people, one book per student. Then you start again, you ask how many of these students like German. 40 students will raise their hand. So, 40 students will end up getting one book of German each. And the third question is how many of you like French? 50 people like French. So, you will end up distributing one French book to 50 people. Right. Now, what has happened is how many people were there? 100. How many books have been distributed? 30 English plus 40 German plus 50 French. So, 120 books have been distributed. Each student gets at least one book. That is the condition here. Same thing that we have written here. What does this mean? Some students would have got exactly one book. Some students would have got exactly two books and some students would have got three books. There cannot be a student with four books because we have distributed only three language books. There cannot be someone with zero books because every student gets at least one book. Let us say that there are A students who get exactly one book, B students who get exactly two books and C students who get exactly three books. So, the number of students will simply be A plus B plus C equals 100 in this particular context. right? And if you try to find the number of books, A people get one book each. So, how many books have been distributed? Only A books. B people get two books each. So, 2B books would have been uh, distributed. And C people get three books each. So, three C books would have been distributed. This will be equal to the number of books that would have been uh, distributed which is 30 plus 40 plus 50 that is 120. Now, on the basis of this, what you get is B plus 2C equals 20. So, I am subtracting the first equation from the second equation. B plus 2C is 20. right? So, the uh, number of people who got exactly two books plus twice the number of people who got exactly three books is 20. That much I know. What else has been given here? The number of students speaking all three languages, which means C is greater by 1 than the number of people speaking exactly two languages. So, C is greater than B by 1. So, C equals B plus 1. What we have to figure out? How many or what is the probability that the student speaks all three languages? So, I need to find the value of C. I know B plus 2C is 20. I know C equals B plus 1. I have two equations. I have two variables. I should be able to find the value of B as well as C. Because in this question, I need to find the value of C, I will eliminate B from these two equations. So, there are a lot of ways in which you can do this. You can do it simultaneously or you can substitute the value of B. So, B in this case is C minus 1. So, I will write it as C minus 1 plus 2C equals 20 or 3C equals 21, C equals 7. So, what is the probability that the student speaks all three languages? Seven such students exist out of a sample set of 100 students. So, 7 by 100 will be 0 0.07. It is very important for you to understand this particular concept if you want to get better at Venn diagrams. So, this is something that you can introspect about, you can think about it and try to apply it in the next Venn diagram question that you come across. So, I hope you have understood the concepts that we discussed in these three questions and I hope you will be able to apply these concepts in the other questions that you come across from this particular topic. We will see you in the next video. Till then, happy learning.